Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video we're going to be reacting to Matthias Krantz's video of changing all of the strings in a piano to 88 tuning forks. So let's get straight into it. I feel like what I'm really finding out is did I just waste a good part of my life on this? So let's uh, try it. I recently talked to a psychologist and she was like, Matthias, you need to get a girlfriend. But to be fair, I don't think she knew that I have five pianos. I also have five pianos and I can tell you it's not an easy situation. But the problem with owning a lot of pianos is that pianos are so hard to keep in tune. And you need years of experience to tune them perfectly yourself. And that's where piano technicians come in. I've tuned quite a few pianos myself and it is actually really quite hard because even though you can hear whether a string is in tune if you've been playing for a long time, the hammers don't always act how you want them to and you can very easily over tune or under tune when you're trying to get such a fine pitch. So it's such a hard thing that's why people train to be an actual piano technician where they tune pianos all the time and you also can get a lot of equipment for it which as a normal pianist you tend not to have a piano has 230 strings and these strings are getting hit by a total of 88 hammers if i exchange every hammer with an actual tuning fork and modify the forks to match the notes on the piano i will have the first piano in the world that will never go out of tune I mean, there are electric pianos that also don't go out of tune. It's a weird way of getting there, but... I mean, it will, but uh, let me show you. Okay, so I assume that you completely didn't understand the idea, because everyone knows tuning forks exist, but we don't know really why they exist. So I spent 1% of a whole day learning about tuning forks, just so I can quickly teach you how they work, so you don't get lost here in the video. Tuning forks used to be used a lot for tuning instruments before we had phones on us all the time or any devices on us all the time which have the ability to hear pitches. So tuning forks were always the way to go or if you're a singer and you need a quick reference then tuning forks have always been good to use. Yeah, lots of piano. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they used to have this a lot back in old pianos. I've seen a few actually that have like candlestick holders on them. So any household pianos. It was so that you could see music. But now obviously they've, they've changed it into this. But I don't know why that is when we have house lights. The Swedish piano in pretty good condition for 575 USD dollars. Yeah, this piano definitely needs to be tuned, so I guess that's pretty convenient. As always, I completely freeze when it's actually time to start the project. Some of you told me that why not just remove the strings of the pianos and make the hammers hit the tuning forks. And I thought, whoa, that's... I can already tell this is going to hurt my feelings badly with him like tearing apart pianos. Let's just order a few test forks, start working and just solve the problems as we go. Three hours later, I think I found a promising model out of aluminium. I ordered eight for 28 US dollars first, just to test this out before ruining myself. So I just unboxed the tuning forks and I have a small problem. <laughs> they are not in tune, none of them. Okay, let me show you. You see? <laughs> it's not even close. So how do we tune a tuning fork? A few minutes later, someone on Discord sent me this formula. Using it, we can see that if the fork gets shorter, the pitch gets higher. So I think we all know what I need to do. File it. The next day, I did a few test holes because I was kind of scared of drilling into the forks considering I only had 8 of them so far and there was no more left in stock. But once I got braver, I made hole after hole and ruined a bunch of tuning forks. And not a single one of them was in the middle as I wanted. On top of that, I also realized that the hole kind of messed up the tuning of the fork. So that was two wasted hours of tuning. I honestly already here almost gave up on this project but instead I decided to send a video of me drilling to discord for advice.
I listened to her advice and built this. And then my dad remade it so it was actually 45 degrees. I tried with the thing, but I still couldn't make a centered hole. I watched YouTube tutorials for hours and followed the exact steps and... I mean, he's putting an awful lot of effort into this project, so fair play. But I mean, what really is the point? And I still couldn't put the hole in the middle. All of this leads me to the confession that I'm not actually an engineer. So I just glued on the first fork and I promise you, I'm not trying it yet just to keep the tension. You know, I'm already 100 hours into this video. If this doesn't work, it doesn't make enough sound. I think I would cry. Let's try. That's loud. My question is here is because the hammer, the tuning fork is still hitting the strings, is it not the strings that's making the noise? How do we know that it's the hammer making the noise? Because the strings will still go out of tune. Conveniently, the seller on Amazon got three more packages back in stock, so I bought all of them. But this time, the price was increased from $28 to $36 per package which was kind of sis. It was time to get back to the drill, but this time on my own. I was a bit worried that I was the common denominator when it came to not being able to aim with the thing. But four hours later, I had only ruined four tuning forks and the rest was honestly pretty perfect. Now it was time to find a faster way to tune the forks. I borrowed this sander that almost unallied me only to end up buying a better one from Biltema for $175. Wow, I haven't learned it. He's spending an awful lot of money investing into this project with equipment. I don't know, I really still don't think it's that worth it. Once I had finally put on the first 14 forks, I realized that they were already getting quite big and would in no way fit if I don't come up with a tuning trick. The piano text advised me to look up something called duplex scales. I made some research and found a patent made 1872 by Theodore Steinway. I don't know why this guy would know anything about pianos, but... It's the best idea we have. The idea was to use- If you don't get that joke, it's because Steinway are like the most famous piano that you can get. And I did do a reaction to how a piano is made and that was in Steinway's factory. But even when using my tricks, the tuning forks started to get so big that they were hitting the dampers on the piano. So I will have to start bending them out of the way. However, if I mess them up, it's over for this piano. I also had to start messing with the angles of the forks, so it was time to build a new angle thing. The one I made first was falling apart, so I made a new one that might actually be more unsymmetrical than my face. So I asked my dad to help me make another one. I had been working 14 hour days until this point, and this is where it really started to show, I think. I proceeded by drilling 45 degree angles in the wrong forks. It's the wrong forks which costed me $48 in minutes and added back four hours of work since they had to be retuned. Then I realized something with my angle thing. Oh, it's 30 degrees the other way. At this point, I had messed up over 22 forks, so it was time to order more. And the seller now had six more packages in stock which was now priced at $90 per package. He's the only one that's buying these forks and they're thinking, wow, this is going out of stock. So now we're gonna just increase the prices, but it's one person buying them. I'd like to say the project went well from now on, so that's why I started this happy music, but it honestly didn't. What you have seen so far has already taken 340 hours of work. I mean, you can see on the farmer's dog how many times I've been here drilling. The biggest forks had to be drilled with two angles at once, but I'm getting good at that part. I made a calculation on the angles. So I had to tell you, I just used math to solve a problem. There is not many people that are gonna to go to this lens to try and find a way of something like this working, so fair play to him.
Audio Jungle. It was time to do the final forks and finish this now. I thought I would put them on the other way so I could reuse all the failed ones. I'll be surprised if he's found forks that can go all the way down to the very bottom of the piano because that is very low so you'd have to have a massive tuning fork. Once I got home, I started to put the final forks on the piano. I used my amazing piano simulator and realized that all the dampers had to be moved down, which I kind of expected, and bent out of the way. I spent four hours bending and messing with them, and when I tried them, I realized that they don't actually work anymore. I, I decided to check if I could move them up at least a little bit and I don't think I had to do this. I actually didn't have to touch them at all. My piano simulator was incorrectly made. I, I wasn't sure I would be able to get them to work again unless I removed all the hammers. And I knew that the hammers had been carefully placed and adjusted by a pro. Not only had I spent 400 hours on this piano, at this point I also spent $2,600. So that entire night, I was just trying to get the piano back to how it was before. I think it's so, it is so upsetting when you've invested that much time into something. I still have no idea why he's doing this other than to make a YouTube video out of it, but when you've put that much time into something and it doesn't work. I can imagine that sucks. That took me like five hours to get back on track. Um, it would definitely not be the same as before the piano. I kind of did my best, but yeah, it's not as consistent as it could have been if I didn't. And this is the last two, so it's not mess. Still interested to see if he takes the strings off because obviously the whole point is that it's the hammers that make the sound and not the strings, no? I feel like what I'm really finding out is, did I just waste a good part of my life on this? So let's uh, try it. Oh, it's kind of like the piano is screaming in pain. It kind of sounds like some chimes. Like, yeah. Uh... The problem is also, because the dampeners, when you play a key, when the key comes off, the dampener goes back on to stop the string. Obviously, if you're just relying on the resonance of a tuning fork, when you take your finger off, it won't stop the note because the fork will still be vibrating. So I wonder how that works. Or is the fact that it's attached to a piece of wood, uh, like wood dowel to, a, to keep it away where the hammer was, is that going to stop it from vibrating altogether so that you just get like the ding of it hitting and then no other sound? I imagine it's harder to press because the weight of the um, tuning forks are probably more than just the wooden hammers that were there. I almost forgot, uh, for, uh, forgot uh, the premise of the whole video. Could you actually use the tuning forks to tune a piano? So they are tuned exactly, like to the scent of what the piano string are supposed to be. However, I'm not sure if you really hear... Oh yeah, it's, it's the fork. 
So, I guess you could. I can't actually tune by ear, so... This whole idea is kind of stupid now when I think about it. But I also realized something else. When I filed the forks, they were so sensitive to just one file was like a major difference in the pitch. And I realized that they get a bit worn down from hitting the strings. And eventually, all of the forks will get out of tune from playing. And there's no way to tune them back. So, I actually made the only piano that, when it goes out of tune, it will never go back in tune again. Here. Yeah, now you can hear I tuned all of them. I think that Steinway guy will be proud. I don't think any result would be ever worth the pain and suffering doing this video. Well, that was an interesting endeavor. I'm still not entirely sure as to what what the point was because he seems to have not got anything out of it but it was interesting to hear the tuning forks on their own when he covered the strings anyway if you like this type of video then let me know in the comments or if you want me to react to something in particular let me know and before you go on to this video make sure you give me a like and a subscribe and i will see you next time